Here we are in Kurumba, it's the start of the prawn season 2015. The guys are all getting ready to head out fairly shortly in the next couple of days. All the crew have tested all their equipment. Each boat will catch around about 100 tonnes of prawns. They'll uh, catch them, process them and freeze them at sea. And the boats will come back every couple of weeks and unload in Kurumba here at our facility. And the product will be loaded up into trucks and head out to uh, all the coal stores around the country. So some of the biggest changes from growing up here as a kid and coming down the wharf and seeing boats come in with wet prawns. And fast forwarding today, we've got onboard freezing. Uh, they put the prawns in the box and they put a box, the boxes in a thing called a snap and they freeze really, really quickly. Well, prawn fishing to me, it's not what you do, it's who we are, really. And be pushed to the limit, and I, I will quote this, to the limit. That brings the best out of you. 2 a.m. Time over shower. Go to bed. Packing roughly 30 ton of prawns in and out of the snaps in the freezer until your hands are bleeding, and you think to yourself, "Why did I put myself in this position?" Curl up in the corner crying. Oh, I've done it myself. You know, the first season it just breaks it. You. You're not a person unless you break out here. Because you know, you're going home, you rack the gear within 24 hours clean your boat down like you clean your house and take pride in what you're doing and that's a proud moment when the skip says right boys it's, it's time to winch up, that's it, last shot, it's all over. Oh, the golf has a special place with me and um, I like coming back every year, the massive catches and the excitement of banana fishing. Well I guess when I actually come up here I was going off the rails a little, I was sent up here by my father to get away from the riffraff. My dad's a diver, my uh, brothers are all trout fishermen. Just thought I'd give it a go on the raptors and see you do a bit of um, trawling. When you uh, catch good prawns, the feeling you get, that's a buzz. That's better, eh? That's better than anything I know and I love doing that. The exciting thing for me with that is when the prawns are on and I'm in there fizzing off the top of the water and just bouncing everywhere like balls, it's time to attack and we'll attack each other any manoeuvre we can and block them out. Because once we start fishing the prawns, there's no time to lose. It's a very demanding job and keeps me very busy and I love that. 20 years ago I lived in Darwin and uh, I loved boats and the ocean and I had an opportunity to work on a boat and I just loved it. Because I found myself a few times getting up in the middle of the night after a tiger shot and just scrubbing the boat for no reason, you know, just had already been scrubbed but just loving the job that much. <laughs> I suppose you've got to be a certain type of person to be able to work on the boat because you're going out to sea for long periods of time. You're in a really confined space with eight people that you've never met before in a super stressful situation sometimes. Most of the people that uh, work on trawlers are a pretty colourful bunch of people. Eclectic. Get him! <laughs> You gotta be a little bit mad already before you come out here, so when you do go mad, <laughs> you're ready for it, you know? We've all got nicknames as Tractor, Muzzer, Car Park, Bartu's Bartu. One fellow has never eaten a wing ding in his life, so we're, we're calling him Wing Ding. So instantly they gave me the name Cookie. Everybody calls me Cookie now. I mean, I'm fine with that. Hey, I'm with Atho, Adzi, and Ben's the skipper. Arnold's engineer, Din's the decky, and we've got this new guy called Simo. They, uh, they treat me with respect. They're adventurous people. They really enjoy exploring the world. I really like like the whole work adventure coming into Kurumba. You know, for me, it's a long, long way from home. I'm from Southern Victoria. I'm from Ashburton in New Zealand. I'm from Port Douglas, actually, uh, born in Mossman. I'm from Germany. Jerome Daniels from uh, Perth, Western Australia. see the world from a different view, like not being on the land 24-7. Might be a little bit of time away from the family, which you know you certainly respect and miss, but then you learn to understand how much you love it when you get back to it, I reckon. And yeah, you just, you just can't wait, you know. Just being out there and not being able to see land and the wildlife that you see is incredible. It's got it all up here. The desert dry areas and the beaches. The beaches are beautiful. Environmental sustainability is an important element of our business and animal welfare plays an important role. The people have this aspect that we are destroying the ocean bottom like the reefs, but it's not true. We stay away from the reefs. 
we trawl on renewable mud bottom that is replenished after every wet season. We've got MSC certification and Friend of the Sea certification that uh, helps us to ensure that we're operating our boats in a sustainable way so that every year we go back there's product there for us to catch. We work closely with government and CSIRO to ensure that we have the best management practices uh, of our industry. The attitude of our crews is very proactive towards conserving our environment. It's a big ecosystem, it's, you've got to have the predators, you've got to have the, the baby ones, it's part of a big cycle, everything helps everything. There's not much big stuff that comes through the nets anymore because of the TEDs. With the um, turtle excluding devices, and the BRDs, which is a byproduct reduction device, all them are in play, they seem to be working quite well. Last year I didn't see one turtle. No plastic goes in the ocean, anything that is basically an intruder to the environment. Araptor and Sons is working with World Animal Protection to come up with practical solutions to tackling the ghost net problem. Now the Gulf of Carpentaria is a global hotspot for ghost nets. Although this fishery isn't part of the problem, they have committed to be part of the solution. I think it's important to uh, collect all the ghost nets and anything that we do see floating around out in the oceans to protect our fishery and the marine life. Raptors have undertaken to report and, if possible, retrieve ghost nets. I can see what you're talking about there now. Everything we can do to make sure that cycle stays the same, it's going to be better for us. I love seeing turtles out there. I'd love my kids to see the turtles out there. Jugongs, dolphins, whales. We've got a beautiful marine life. We look after what we've got. We've got a beautiful backyard. Raptors, in my eyes, are the best company you could ever want to work for. They definitely have to be the leaders as far as um, technology goes. They pay well. Plenty of gear here in Crumb Boat. There's just ample amounts of gear for the boat. There's no shortage of gear. Then you got to look around at the boats and sort of see the work that goes into the boats and the training that we all get. With their backup, chore support is um, second to none. I mean, Heather in the, in the office, she's so super nice. Like, uh, whatever I have, like, ever, any problem, I can go to her. They're very professional about the way they approach their fishing. I had personal issues, very bad ones back home. They looked after me, made sure I got home, made sure I got the right planes. To see such a big company you care about individual workers like that, it's good to see, especially as we only in my first year. Our company continues to go from strength to strength over the last few years. I believe the industry is on the rise and there's a real uh, upbeat feel about what's going on around here. And we are continuing to work towards operating a successful business. Thank you.